Now that you have a Gantt chart set up in Team Gantt to plan your entire project out, you have a fantastic project management tool. This is going to be incredibly helpful for you and your project team to make sure that you've got all of the key tasks captured and you see how they relate to each other, you know um, whether you have time to complete things before major milestones. Um, and maintaining that over the course of the project is going to be a, a great way to ensure success for your project. But one thing that a Gantt chart is not really ideal for is managing those tasks on a week-to-week -week basis. So Team Gantt has added a new tool called a board that allows you to do task management as opposed to project management. And it works with exactly the same data, so we're not duplicating effort. Any changes you make in the board carry over to the Gantt chart and vice versa. Let me show you how to get the board set up so that you can use them in a weekly status review meeting with your project coach. So when you, you want to come up here to the board tab across the top, and then we get it set up. First thing you need to do is name your columns. And I recommend that you create five columns. The first one is going to be future. Those are the tasks that are coming up in the future. Second one is next week. These are the tasks that you're going to be working on in the next week. And then there's incomplete, which will be where you keep the tasks that you did not finish in the prior week. And then recently completed are going to be those tasks that you completed in the past week. And then finally, previously completed. Okay, once you've got them listed here, scroll down, choose the next button, and you can establish a percentage for each of these, which is the um, projects or the task percent that will be applied to that task if you move it into that column. This is kind of nice. It means you don't have to update the percentage completion, and you can just move it between the column, move it into the right one that represents the completion. So for future, if something's in that column, it should be 0% because you haven't started it yet. Um, at the opposite end here, anything previously completed should be at 100%. Recently completed should be at 100%. And then next week and incomplete. Next week likely is 0%, but may not be. You might have started something earlier. So we're not going to put any percentage there. Incomplete could be anything between 0 and 100. But for simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 50. So if you put something into incomplete, it shows it's partially complete. Now, you notice as I type these, we got these green bars at the bottom. You look on the left here, it says that um, this is the auto move option. So if you place in the, um, if you set a task's percentage to a certain amount and it matches one of these columns, then Team Gantt will automatically move the task into that column, which is pretty nice. I'm going to leave that for the incomplete one. I think that makes sense. If anywhere in Team Gantt you set something to 50%, what you're saying is it's currently incomplete. Um, Recently completed, I think that makes sense. If you are working on a task and you set it to 100%, then it should move over to recently completed. I'm going to remove it from previously completed because obviously that would conflict if both of them auto moved, you wouldn't know what to do. Um, and then when you create a new task, it's going to be at 0% completion and we want those new tasks to show up in that future column. So I think that's a, a good auto move as well. So you can play with these yourselves, but I think this is a good initial setting. So I'm going to finish and create the board. When you create it, you get your um, and your current project task showing up in the future column because that's the first one we created. And now what I'm going to do is take these because it's the initial setup, the ones that I've already completed, and I'm going to move them into either recently complete, previously completed, and then the ones that should have been done in the past week into incomplete and then next week. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me doing all that moving and then I'll come back in just a moment. So I've set up the columns as if we have finished basically the first week of work. So you have recently or, or finished choosing the project, meeting the team and emailing the sponsor. Actually, these should have been, sorry. At the end of your first week, these would be in recent. So there's one thing you didn't finish, four things you did finish. So now to prepare for your next week um, meeting, 
you are going to take those things that you, you had completed previously, move them over to previously completed. This incomplete item, if it's still incomplete, you're going to leave it there. If you have completed it, you move it over to recently completed. Um, and then you look at the things that you had planned for this coming week, interviewing your sponsor. Let's say you have done that, finding articles related to your first technical challenge. And let's say you've done the second section, second technical challenge, but not the third, so that moves to incomplete. You've asked the sponsor about some current products. You've done online searches for products. Uh, you haven't finished your patent searching and you have not finished your product reviews. So this would be your setup then for your meeting with your uh, project coach. You've got items you can talk about that have been completed. Now, remember each one of these completed ones, you should have some evidence to show uh, the results of it. It should be either in your project notebook or in your files somewhere. For the incomplete ones, these are highlighting for your project coach that uh, there might be an issue or perhaps it's just that there was a delay and it doesn't affect your overall project. So be prepared to discuss what the impact of these being delayed is and if there's an issue that you have that you need some help with. The final thing then is to identify those tasks that you're going to do over this next week. And so I'm going to pull some over here just based on the dates. And that's a good way to start. If your Gantt chart is well set up, then that's the main thing you do. But then you look through the tasks and you think, is there anything else that we need to be doing this next week? And if there is, you can add the task right here. And again, if you add it here, then it will also show up on your Gantt chart. All right, that's basically it. You're going to then focus in a WSR meeting on these three middle columns. And I hope that you find this a helpful tool to track your tasks on the fly as you're going through the project.